Before I get to today's video, I'd like to verbally thank my patrons, especially those donating $10 or more a month, such as CeeLo, Anatoly Volnov, Cooper Sutton, Duncan Bristow, Fockhead, Jano, and Young Master Pig. I've had a really tough time producing content these last couple of weeks, all because I could have been spending this time playing Hitman. I remember when Hitman 2016 came out. I thought it was awesome. It was exactly what I was looking for after being so into Blood Money and so burned by Absolution. 2016 was a set of really interesting, unique stealth mechanics that can't be found outside of the Hitman series, and an emphasis on a perfect performance that always draws me to the best stealth games. However, after playing through the six levels, the game quickly disappeared from my mind. There just wasn't enough content here to keep me entertained for more than a few days. Then, when Hitman 2 came out, I couldn't run it at all past the first level, which was so small, so I was effectively done with the series. However, a few years and some substantial PC upgrades later, I had a beefy enough computer to handle Hitman 2, so I installed it again, and I realized that I couldn't be more wrong about the games not having enough content. I've got around 30 hours in Hitman 2, and I've hardly scratched the surface of what I want to do with this game, especially when you account for all of the content in Hitman 1 that I ignored in pursuit of a 5-star mission rating. So what changed? How did I go from feeling like the games had hardly any content, to being straight up overwhelmed by the amount of content at my fingertips? Well, I followed in the tradition of Ringo Starr and got by with a little help from my friends. I almost never play single player games while talking to other people, but since I had already played the introductory to Hitman 2 when the game first launched, I figured that I wouldn't lose much by playing through it while in a Discord call this time around. I had a friend in my voice chat who's a nut for this game and wanted me to stream it for him. And after knocking out my target and chucking her off the porch of her house and laughing with my buddy about how the guards just assumed it was some sort of freak accident, I got my 5 star rating and my buddy told me about something else. If you terrify your target in this mission, she'll run through her safe room and seek the protection of a couple guards out near the beach. Well, if you then run up and take those guards out and intimidate her some more, this happens. Target down. Well done, 47. Now get off the property. Just like that, I realized that this game gets a hundred times more entertaining and interesting if you stop freaking out about turning in a perfect performance and start experimenting with the game's systems a bit more. It feels like almost anything can happen in this game, but it's on you to engineer those situations. And when you start looking at the game like that, suddenly, so much of its content starts to make sense. I used to think, why would I ever do this back massage method to get rid of my target? A snapped neck is pretty unambiguously not an accident, so I wouldn't get as good of a score as I could otherwise. Well, now I do these non-accidental assassinations just to enjoy the spectacle of Agent 47 tricking everyone he comes across, and somehow being a fantastic masseuse on top of that. I used to never go for sniper kills or gun kills at all, because a ballistics kill was sure to be noticed by the guards, thus ruining my chance at a 5-star rating. Now, I'll take a sniper rifle and find some cool place to snipe from, maybe lay down a trap to cover my flank and poke away at my targets from the other side of the map. I'll try ridiculously ballsy plays and actually pull them off half the time, or maybe I'll go in guns blazing for a kill everyone challenge. Basically, to sum it up, I'll kill people using methods other than just dropping chandeliers on them and throwing their unconscious bodies over ledges, and me and my buddies will be howling like banshees the whole time. I used to think that this was just a stealth game with a unique disguise mechanic, but after getting more experimental and trying out different playstyles, I realized that this game is just a murderer simulator. And whatever murderer simulator means to you, that's a valid way to play. Practically every possible method of murdering someone is accounted for in this game. Poisoning, stabbing, shooting, electrifying, burning, drowning, choking, neck snapping, crushing, exploding, staging a suicide or horrific accident, prompting an actual suicide, feeding someone to hippos, causing a car wreck, you can even hit someone with a goddamn train. And all of that is just scratching the surface. I don't want to sound like I'm getting too giddy about the concept of a murderer simulator, but the simple fact of the matter is that any mission can play out in a hundred different ways, and again, it's on you to engineer everything, so it really does feel like an accomplishment. But on top of that, literally no matter what you do, these systems will result in something funny happening. Whether it's the idea that nobody finds Agent 47 suspicious so long as he wears the right clothes, or situations where your ever-growing knowledge of the AI lets you come up with incredibly stupid and unrealistic plans that somehow work perfectly, like this scene where a potential buyer and his bodyguard were following this totally inconspicuous real estate agent as they gave a house tour.
I was actually all alone at the time of this recording, playing outside of a Discord call, but I was still laughing my ass off with an ear-to-ear -ear grin marking my face. Disguising as the real estate agent also goes to show how Hitman 2 really cranks up the comedy in Agent 47's character. No matter how good he is at disguising, he isn't really capable of acting like anything but an absolute psychopath. I mean, you can choose to show this target various rooms in the house, and here's how 47 describes some of them. This is the downstairs living room. It is most commonly used for watching television and other recreational purposes. Large room, with two easy to get to exits. Dark floors, hide stains easily. A room with lots of potential. That's all fine. Is there more to this house, though? The kitchen, gas stove, vinyl floors, which can be quite slippery when wet. Along with the bathroom, the kitchen is the most dangerous room in the home. Uh, interesting, I suppose, but not really something that seals the deal for me. It looks quite versatile. Internal climate control and explosive laser security. All the comforts of home. The game is loaded with incredibly suspicious dialogue like that, whether it's 47 constantly saying that things are to die for, or calling himself Dr. Reaper just before injecting this woman with lethal poison. So, what's on the menu? Something that'll take care of this hideous pain in my neck, I hope. I promise. Once I'm done, you won't feel a thing. So what's in this thing anyway, Doc? Mostly floral extracts, hemlock, belladonna, aconite. It's designed to be fast and efficient. Fast and efficient. I like that. Wait, wait, Belladonna? Isn't that poisonous? Yes. Should I be concerned? I'm not. Just relax. It'll be over soon. This just further emphasizes the simple fact that 47 is somehow different from all of these civilians. He's an extension of the player, and in this context, the player is just a stone-cold, 100% focused murderer. And that, combined with 47's beautifully stiff animations, slow walking speeds, and absolutely casual approach to firefights, paints a picture of a player character that somehow feels more robotic than the actual NPCs. I mean, just look at this animation. Many of the rails on this game have a lean option that makes you blend in a little bit better. There is so much subtlety to this and the other poses that they practically deserve their own paragraph. 47 just looks so uncomfortable whenever he has to play the role of a normal human, someone whose back gets itchy and who needs to use the restroom from time to time. He's just uncanny in the most subtle way possible. I mean, look at how he refuses to arch his back and break away from his perfect posture, instead of just trying to look like he's relaxing. It's some magical combination of sad, horrifying, and hilarious, and the same can be said for all of these animations. This video is supposed to be about me learning to explore Hitman's wealth of content, right? Well, one of my favorite parts of that experience has been seeing more of Agent 47's totally non-human character. We all laugh about how nobody notices the barcode on his head, but it runs so much deeper than that. There is absolutely no situation where 47 doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. This guy has assassin written all over him, and I promise this is the only time I'll bring this phrase up, but this is a perfect and utterly hilarious example of ludonarrative harmony. The game is all about an almost robotic assassin who somehow manages to go undetected in spite of being incredibly conspicuous, and the gameplay and the animations all work together to bring across that same motif. So I've had more fun than I ever thought I could with the game's systems, and by exploring Agent 47's character. I wouldn't really blame myself for not exploring all of this content my first time around, at least I wouldn't until considering how much the game prompts you to. Every time you finish a mission, you're greeted to this beautiful screen where, even after a run that feels very thorough, inevitably you'll be greeted with this huge list of challenges that you haven't completed, and you'll see tons of new ways to tackle each mission. Maybe you'll do a fantastic job in Hokkaido, completing your mission in interesting, subversive ways, only then to realize that this yellow motorcyclist outfit was actually a reference to Kill Bill, and that it would be totally awesome if you grabbed a katana and ran through this place cutting down all the guards, roleplaying as the bride. Or maybe after doing your business in Santa Fortuna, the game says, hey, bet you can't feed all three targets to the hippos, and the only way I can respond is just by saying, challenge accepted. The game just sort of dangles all of these challenges over your head, and each one of them can lead to so many interesting mechanical situations, and that's just because, as I realized after messing with this game more than I did originally, this is such an incredibly designed game. Honestly, it's one of the most tightly designed games I've ever played, so long as you keep the mission story hints to a minimum. 
This is a game that's all about laughing at how NPCs don't notice you, so becoming a better assassin is less about perfecting your aim, and more about learning simple tricks like bumping into a guard over and over again, causing your target to walk off without the protection of his guard, giving you just the chance you need to drop a chandelier on his head. It's about opening a door in a particular way so that you can hide behind it long enough to drop your precious firearm, so that a guard notices it, leaving you alone with a man you want to dress up as, and then immediately grabbing the gun from the secured locker that the guard took it to. It's about choking out somebody who's mere feet away from somebody else and never getting caught. Basically, it's about doing things that would absolutely get you caught in real life, but that these silly NPCs aren't going to call you out for. And that's why I say that this design is so genius. It's because the AI in this game is really complicated compared to most games, but it's so readable that they seem so stupid. You can predict exactly what a guard is going to do in almost any situation that isn't too hectic, which means you can manipulate them. And even if your opponent feels this stupid, it's incredibly rewarding to outsmart this many of them, which is just driven further by how many unique situations you'll get yourself into during your time with this game. Agent 47 just acting as the uncanny rock that grounds you throughout all of this game's surrealism. It's just beautiful. I could go on to talk about how the escalation missions force you to get more and more creative with your tactics, or the awesome ghost mode multiplayer, which is like playing a dynamic, murder-centric version of Horse, or the wealth of mission stories that put Agent 47 in a huge list of hilarious scripted situations, or the crazy amount of weapons and unlockable tools, or the interesting tweak and strategy that comes from playing the elusive target missions, which you only get one attempt at. But I think I've made my point, and with that, I can finally slap together an outro for this video and get back to playing Hitman.